Hey guys, there is a new version of Google Analytics and it is big news. Action is required on your part. You're not going to get the new Google Analytics unless you make some changes. And we'll talk about why you may want to make those changes as soon as possible. Now we've got some news of our own. The Income School YouTube channel is changing our uh, publishing date from Monday to Tuesday. So if you've been relying on Monday morning the videos, world will end. Like, <laughs> biggest news of the day. Sorry, you're gonna have to wait till Tuesday. I know that's huge news, but <laughs> as, on a secondary note, we'll talk a little bit about Google Analytics as so well. So now Tuesday, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's when our videos come out. So if you're used to Mondays tuning into our videos, just reprogram your mind a little bit. Yeah, you'll get used to it. We gotta dive straight into the new Google Analytics. So first of all, when you first come to see it it's gonna look really familiar. You know, the kind of layout design is very much the same. And at first blush, you could think there's not a change at all. But actually, this is a huge shift to how Google Analytics worked. So here's the big change. The way Google Analytics worked before is somebody comes to a page, it fires that code and says, somebody was here, the end. That's, that's what Google's measuring. Right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's some user demographic information, but basically someone came to this page and then sometimes it's like, okay, same user, another page. Yeah. But that's the extent of it. That's how they're measuring time on page. That's how they're, oh, that's how they're yeah, measuring so everything. I came to the page, two minutes later, that same code from the same computer fired the code again. Right, not the same user, the same computer. Right. Yeah, in um, the same browser. If somebody was on a phone and switched to a, to a computer, you'd have no totally idea. The time on page measurement was always completely wrong. Yeah. And we've talked about that on the channel before, why that number was not something you should even pay attention to because of the way it was measured. The new Google Analytics is stupid smart. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Stupid smart. Stupid is, smart. Hmm. It is stupid smart. Crazy smart. Let's go with that one. <laughs> so uh, first thing you'll notice right on the home is this average engagement time. This is a cool number because it can now track even when a user is scrolling on the page, how much of the page they saw. And they actually know how long you were on the page. Um, that's pretty darn cool. That's changed substantially. And now, instead of having it, again, browser cookie-based, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we've got a lot more user-based information based upon Google logged in users. If I am on YouTube and I watch your video, and then later on my computer that's also logged into Google, go and I go to the blog post that's tied to that YouTube video, Google can now Or buy your ebook, buy your course. Yeah. You can tell that they, did I find them first on my YouTube channel or on the blog and which blog post? Yeah. Um, now, before on the Google, old Google Analytics, you could set up goal tracking and you could say they started from this page, but not, you couldn't say if they started from a different browser and on YouTube and all and these different, different things. And... You can do way more now. And so if you have any kind of info product, lead magnets, all that kind of stuff, we can get really smart. And the reason I said in the intro that you need to make a change now is the longer you track this data, the better information you're gonna have. So you don't have an info product today, fine. But if you're going to a year from now, you want this data um, so that you can know how, how your marketing works. Exactly. Now, one thing that you'll notice being right here on the homepage is, again, at first glance, it looks very similar, but even as you look at the options in the left-hand menu, they've changed pretty dramatically. Totally different. It's gonna be hard to find if you're looking for a specific report from the old analytics. It's not gonna be there. Um, and in fact, if you just want to see like the page views, the trend of page That's views on your website. That's the one I want to see big on yeah. the front. We as, as bloggers, we care about that because impressions on the site, I mean, that's what drives revenue for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so we want to know that number. Um, it's not there on the homepage anymore. So for that, you got to go to engagement, you got to go to overview, and then you got to scroll down to the second chart. And on that chart is where you're going to be able to see the page views um, per day, per month, and you can set the time frame just like you could before. Now, this is a really cool case study. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see, obviously, this is a brand new property because that's one of the required, that's what you have to do to set this up. We'll show you that in a minute. But, um, so we're only showing two days worth of data on here because that's when we created this new. But what if we told you that this website that's got this data on it with over 1,600 page views yesterday is a week old. <laughs> it has four posts on it as of right now. 
So that's going to be a cool case study. We'll talk about that. We'll definitely talk about that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, you can get into a lot more here as you scroll through um, your Google Analytics. Audiences is going to be much, much more powerful now um, as you're tracking that. Again, it's a lot more than just the old goal tracking. The way that conversions are done now um, is a lot more detailed. So now let's talking about talk to you who already have a Google Analytics property and you're wanting to get this set up. So if you have an old Google Analytics property and we have a bunch of them and we like our old data. Yeah, we don't lose it. Sorry, you cannot just move this suddenly into a Google Analytics 4. You need to create a new property, a new ID, a new yes. They call thing. it a web property, right? Yeah, in Google Analytics to start tracking in this completely new way. Now you can keep your old property so you can go back and view your historical data, but right now there's no way to just merge it all over. That doesn't exist right now. Maybe it will happen in the future. Google didn't really make any promises that right. way. Um, and so either way, you do need to start a new Google Analytics property for Google Analytics 4. Um, and once you have that done, we'll show you how you can use your old tracking code um, to start sending data over here. So you can kind of have it in two different places, or you can just call your old data, your old data, start a new property and take the new code and put it on your website. I think that's what I would recommend. I would go get yeah. the new code and just put it on your website, start fresh. Anytime you want to go look at the historical data, look to your old property. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. And so, um, and the, the big difference here is that if you do it the first way Jim said, then the old tracking ID will continue to track. Yes. So you'll be able to go to the old property and see all your historical data and your current and new data. Mm -hmm. If you just switch the tag and only have the tag for your new property on the website, then you're going to be looking at old data on the old property, new data only on the new property, which I think is fine. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, that's the data that I'm going to care about anyway. Google, all updates to Google Analytics are the new one going yes. forward. And so I kind of feel like, Rip off the Band-Aid yeah. and let's move to the new one. To do that, all we're doing, I mean, you go into admin here on there and you just, you've got an account already and you just create a property. Click the button, create property, um, web and... Web is the old one. That's the Apps old one. and web is Down the here. new one. It says beta. If you start a new Google Analytics account, this will be the default experience right. and it should be showing Google Analytics 4, but it was called Apps and Web Beta for the last year. <laughs> anyway, they have it all messed up, but that's the one That's you the want. one that you want. You'll click continue. You'll give it a name, a category, all the same things you normally did with Google Analytics before. Um, and you'll just click create and it will create a new web property for you. Once you have a property, so we'll go into this one that we've set up, um, it'll take you through the setup assistant. You'll have this tag installation. In here is where you have your, your options. First of all, this is a cool thing. You can add in multiple streams because it's, you know, app and web. If you have an app, if you have a YouTube channel, you can add multiple streams here um, and, and pull in that data and have it all combined, which is pretty neat. Um, and then here in the tagging instructions, you can use the existing on-page ta on tag. This is what Jim said. To do that, you pull in your old tag, or this will tell you exactly how to set it up. You actually have to go onto your other property, put in this tag ID, which is actually ours, um, and put that in on, your, on the old property. And these are the exact instructions on how to do that. Or you can do it through Google Pe uh, Tag Manager. Now, what Jim recommended and what we would suggest is to actually just take the new tag, the new script, um, itself and then just go put that in the head section on your on your website. Yeah, just the same just way that you it. put in your old code. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little funky to have the old property and the new property for each. I hate that, but I do understand it's a completely different way of measuring the analytics on your site. And so I can see why they did it this way. Either way, I, you need Google Analytics for. Uh, it's going to make you a better internet marketer. Um, so rip off the band-aid yeah. <laughs> and uh, get used to the new one. It is awesome, even though when you first look at it, you could be deceived into thinking it's basically uh, the same thing, the new same thing, but different, exactly. Um, and so uh, something to keep in mind is that, again, we've said rip off the band-aid now, no matter where you are in your site creation process. 
if you know again you're, you're a blogger and you're not selling info products and you're not even trying to convert people to an email list you're just creating a blog still go get that data now because then in the long term if you ever want to do any of these things you'll have that history of data that's been tracking your users across all yeah, of your you different could platforms. set up your conversions to even be them sign up to your email list you're able yeah. to track everything if you do it that way all right google analytics 4 is awesome go set it up right now